Hey folks, welcome back. Um, sorry I've been gone, I've been super busy. We're gonna start today with some updates that came out a week or two ago on uh, Luna with the quantization, the tempo mapping, and stuff like that. Let's dive right in and start with, let's say a project gets sent to you from someone who cares about you, and um, they have included a tempo map. What you would do is take those files and drag them into Luna, and it will ask you, the imported MIDI file contains a tempo map. Do you want to change the current tempo? And of course you say use tempo map. And it will import all those files and set up an entire tempo map for you with the markers if they were in there. That's cool. And there you go. At the top up here, you'll see tempo, this section right here. I'm gonna drag it down. You can see a little better. Where someone has diligently mapped this whole thing uh, yeah, this is pretty common. You'll see a song start off kind of uh, in the same area and then gradually get a little faster as it goes. And if I were to start this song, let's just say we started with a, a guitar playing and I'll turn a metronome on. Great. That's awesome. That's all you would need to do if someone cared about you and they sent you a nice package full of clips and uh, tracks that have been lined up and mapped. But that's not always what happens, right? So let's take a look at a different example. Okay, so in this example here, I have uh, a set of tracks here sent in uh, with drums and bass. And let me play this for you from the beginning. And uh, I've actually made a little marker up here that says late. You'll hear a little a drum hit that's pretty late right there. Yeah, right in here, that's a problem. But if I zoom in here on just the drums, let me uh, grab those as a group, you can see just from the beginning here, that's a little bit early. I'm not too worried about that one. Um, this one these are kind of like right on, they kind of got with the click there. But then there's this one uh, hit right there. And you can tell that one's too late, right? If I turn a metronome on. Yeah, it's got, that's going to be an issue right there. So let's talk about how we fix this. What I would do to fix this is I have these as a group. And I want to keep them as a group because drums, especially if they are recorded together, they need to stay together um, for phase relationships. In other words, if I were to quantize the kick or the snare by itself, the microphones that are picking up that sound are gonna be completely out of whack. So we need to keep it as a group, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over here to this area of the track and I'm gonna hit the Q button. That's gonna turn on the uh, quantize pane here and I want to come down to the drums area. I have track groups selected here, and that's gonna keep everything lined up here in this group. I want to tell Luna to use the kick in as sort of the main focus of this, right? It's gonna really take a look at that kick in. I'll say kick out too. Um, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. No, you know what? No, I'll, I'll put the snare top on there. Everything else is going to be fine as long as I have those, uh, you know, Luna's paying attention to those tracks when I tell it to quantize. So if I take a selection here, I'm just going to drag uh, over to about here. Uh, these look fine to me. And I'm going to hit quantize to, let's say, eighth note. And you'll see right there, they kind of lined right up. Now, I can make them line up even stronger. Let me zoom in a bit here. You see, they lined up pretty good. Uh, they're better than they were. This strength function here will actually line it right up to the grid. If I zoom that in to 100%, that's gonna line all of those up to the grid. And it has kept the relationship between the room mic, the ribbon mic here, picking up the room. You can kind of see that it's a little bit later than the other ones, and that's fine, because that's supposed to be that way. If I pull this back a little bit, you'll see the, the waveform zoom a little bit farther out than uh, being 100% on grid. 
Let's take a listen to this. Let me back up a second here. There we go. So what are these other functions here? If I come in here and grab these again, and I turn this quantize off, it'll scoot it back. I don't even have to like undo anything. It just remembers that I've already quantized that. It's a really nice feature. So uh, the first uh, parameter up here, the swing, it's kind of self-evident. That's going to allow you to uh, tell Luna to swing this as it quantizes. Also, the range function tells Luna how far to look for transients uh, to, to pick up on. Now, I can look at that if I turn the view to uh, warps here. You can see Luna has... Uh, let me drag this a little bit bigger so you can see. Uh, okay, so you can see that Luna has detected these um, transients that we have already kind of manipulated a little bit. And let me go back to the queue. Now, if I select 16th notes, you'll see inside of that selection, it's telling me that, okay, these are the selections of 16th notes that it's found. And I can move the strength back, and you'll see those move out and back. The range will try to find more transients or less transients. So if I want to pick up certain ones and not others, then that's how you would use range. I typically have been using this at about 50. I think that's the default. It picks up everything I pretty much need it to do. And again, if I move the strength, it will uh, move everything to the grid. This auto apply is pretty simple. Just leave that on. <laughs> um, seriously, just leave that on. You can actually see the quantization happening and you can just hit play and listen to it right away. If you don't have this on, you'll have to click quantize every time you change a parameter. Um, that's basically it. I mean, there's nothing else fancy about it, you know? I mean, there's a lot of fancy stuff going on under the hood here. But as far as quantizing goes, that's pretty much how you do it. Uh, so let's take a look at a different example. In this example, this is real typical of something you would be sent that has no tempo information at all. Although it, it does have a tempo, but there's not, I mean, it's definitely not uh, a click, right? So let's take a listen to it right fast and I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, sort of easy going, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to that again and get sort of a feel for a tempo. One, two, three, four, something like that, right? So I'm going to come over here to the tempo marker. I'm going to come to the beginning of the song. I'm going to hit this little plus symbol up here. And I'm going to tap. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to hit apply. That's going to set me up for about, oh goodness, 78.81. That's, that's pretty specific. But I bet it's not quite right if I turn on the metronome here. Yeah, that's totally kind of off, right? So what I want to do is I want to line up this first bar here. Yeah, so let's take all of these. We're going to select all of these uh, tracks here. Uh, by the way, it's easier to move things uh, if you create a group and call it all and uh, make sure everybody's in that group. Right, so this first one is actually kind of right. If I listen to... Yeah, I'm going to say that's pretty good right there, okay? And now what I need to do is I'm going to set this as bar one. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to align the next bar, which is this transient right here, align bar. That's number two. That creates a tempo map between two bars right there. So let's, so let's grab this guy and tell Luna that it is um, the next bar. And there's a key combination for that that makes it easier. But you can see right here that they went from 81 to about 86. Let's say bar 3 is here. And I'm going to align that one. 
that actually tells Luna that the measure before it is a certain length. So, right. So this last measure that you're gonna hear is not gonna be quite right until you do the very next one. It's just one of those things. So you can go through the entire tune, kind of like this, find the next chord. We're gonna align that. Okay, but this bar is not going to sound right until I grab the next bar and tell Luna what it is. There's my next chord. And that key combination is Option Shift Command I. All right. Okay. Option Shift Command I. Again, that's not going to quite sound right until I get the next one. I'm going to say it's about right. Uh, yeah, about right there. I'm sure. Shift Command Option I. Bam. Let's listen to that. Okay, and we can keep going and make an entire tempo map out of the song that way. And what's cool about that is I can quantize any of these other weirdos that are uh, kind of playing off beat. Let me uh, solo this baritone main and the baritone two. Okay, so this sounds okay to me right here, but if I wanted to tighten up some of this. So I'm gonna select this first part here that seems a little bit out. I'm gonna watch this happen as I hit warps. And I'm going to come back to the Q. I'm gonna hit quarter note. I don't want it locked all the way on there, but uh, yeah, pretty good. I actually don't need all of these uh, transients, I don't think. Let's actually get rid of some of those. Now. There you go. Locked right in, right? Super simple. And if you notice over here, I actually have this on the selection. So it's it's... Uh, quantizing the selection that I have here, which is this track. Uh, I don't have any groups or anything going on. And it, you know, it only has one option for um, the uh, track because I've only used one here. Pretty simple, right? And you can do that for the whole track. It's pretty great, uh, I have to admit. I've been used to doing this in uh, Logic and in uh, Pro Tools for well over a, a decade. And um, this is just way easier and it um, sounds better to my ear, this quantization. Whatever they're using here, this um, algorithm sounds better. If I need to change it, by the way, you can always change the warp to uh, something else, you know. Uh, for things like drums, I would use razor blade, even though it probably doesn't matter. If it sounds good, just leave it, you know. If there's something that happens where you hear an artifact from the quantization, my suggestion is to go in and change that, um, the algorithm and it will probably clear it right up. Awesome, so uh, that's a video on the new features in Luna, and I'm sure new ones are coming on soon. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for being patient with my videos. I've uh, been super busy making music with other folks, and uh, please continue liking and subscribing, and I promise more videos are coming very soon.